Hello YouTube, this is Garrett one again. Just uh, thought I would take a few minutes to uh, do a kind of impromptu video review of Debian 7.0 Wheezy. Uh, I've been using Debian on and off for a couple of years now and it's by far my favorite. Uh, and this is their latest release. I think it was just released a couple of days ago to what they call stable. Uh, they follow a rolling release model where you may not necessarily get a new version every six months but they kind of they have three or four concurrent versions that they develop on and then as time progresses they they pull one back and call it stable and then the old one gets kicked out and so anyway this is Debian 7 uh, their latest one that was moved into stable production so if you go to Debian.org and hit download this is what you're going to get unless you look for something in specific uh, it ships with GNOME 3, uh, which I have actually never used myself. Uh, in this mode, uh, you're seeing me use GNOME Classic. Uh, at the login screen, it gives you an option for GNOME, which is the regular GNOME 3, or GNOME Classic. In this video, we're going to be using GNOME Classic. Uh, in the GNOME Classic, it kind of looks like GNOME 3, uh, except when you touch the top left, you don't get any menu here but uh, in my opinion it's much faster for me to find things that I'm looking for uh, using these menus in the GNOME Classic version now you still have some of the GNOME 3 features uh, and some of the GNOME 3 look and feel uh, but there's not much graphics acceleration going on and you actually have little menus here that you can use to quickly access things uh, I also noticed that in system tools uh, they have removed uh, the software center that I guess was backported from Ubuntu which uh, I think is a good thing uh, because in my experience even in the latest release of Ubuntu the software center is extremely slow and unresponsive uh, sometimes you'll select a few packages to install and uh, the whole program will freeze for 30 seconds and then it'll all kind of catch up and then they'll all be listed in the queue on the in progress side uh... so while it is a little bit less user friendly i am happy personally about the fact that they just took it out altogether because uh... i think synaptic is a much better product and uh... two minutes worth of teaching the users how to use synaptic is is better than having them frustrated constantly at how, just how slow the software center can be at times uh, now I've already installed some of uh, some th uh, software that I use that does not come with Debian, but for the most part, what you see is is what comes with Debian 7. Now I did have to do a little bit of work to get Steam uh, installed. There's a a guy out there who released a modified version of the Deb, so it works on Debian now. Uh, I also noticed that uh two things because uh the last version of debian i used i used gnome 2 and then i kind of screwed around with ubuntu and unity and it was okay except it just was was slow but when you right click this taskbar up here and i've tried this in gnome 3 the the regular gnome as well you get no context options at all if you want to say move this clock over here because you don't particularly like its position uh, you you don't have that option and I'm not sure if they're all like this but I've tried this in the regular GNOME version as well the desktop is just kind of there uh, you can right click it and nothing seems to happen if you want to change your wallpaper you've got to click on your name system settings and then click on the background option and then there you get uh, the option to add or remove wallpapers now I've also noticed that uh, the desktop folder exists it's pre bookmarked in Nautilus the files application but what the contents of the desktop folder are not listed on your desktop now I'm sure there's a way to, to change this like I said I, this is literally my first foray into GNOME 3 so I'm still kinda feeling my way around I remember messing around with KDE 4 a long time ago and it had a, a similar feature where you had to go you know check a box to tell it to display the contents of the desktop folder on your desktop but uh, 
coming from a world of GNOME 2 and and Unity and 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 Windows where you have icons on your desktop for the default behavior uh, to be nothing and for there not to be any kind of clear ways to change that uh, I guess it's kind of a downer for me I mean overall I like the way it functions and the way it looks but I just it, it was a little off uh, offsetting kind of threw me off when I first got it going um, you've got your, your normal clock here works just like normal you can right click it and change the time and things like that uh, so yeah this is my uh, I guess this is more of a first impression video of, uh, of Debian 7.0 Wheezy uh, it comes with a pulse audio as well uh, so you kinda get the advantages of that uh, it's also multi arch uh, let me show you if I can show you something in here multi arch basically means that you don't necessarily have to anymore install IA32-libs uh, to use 32-bit deb files if you're running the 64-bit version of Debian. Uh, and anybody who's ever ran a 64-bit version of Debian has probably ran into the situation where they go download some game or some piece of software that's only available in 32-bit, and then when they try to install it, they realize, oh crap, it also depends on this whole list of 32-bit deb files. And even though you have that software installed, it's the 64-bit version. Well, with the multi-arch, uh, right out the gate, you can run one command in the terminal. There's a whole page on it on the Debian website. Uh, and uh, what it does is it basically allows you to install 32-bit uh, versions of all of your libraries on the 64-bit environment. So let's say you go download a 32-bit piece of software uh, and you go to install it. You don't have to manually go find all of the 32-bit dependencies. It'll have them in your repository already as long as they're the correct version. Uh, let me see. So that's kind of a plus. Uh, you'll notice that when you go to Skype.com, which I downloaded Skype because I've I don't particularly use it a lot, but there are some friends that are on it, so I, I do keep it on here. When you say choose your distribution for Debian, it doesn't even have 64-bit listed as an option. It's it's a 32-bit deb file, but it knows that starting with Debian 7, it's all multi-arch. So, and then here's the you know here's the how to on how to get it running it's not very hard uh, so yeah overall uh, I think it's a worthy upgrade from Debian 6 feels a little bit fresher some newer versions of software uh, and as always I've had absolutely zero problems with crashes or anything of that nature uh, if you have an ATI graphics card and it's not one of the newer graphics card that's supported uh, you're gonna have to wait a little while because when I tried to install the proprietary ATI drivers I was presented with a message telling me that uh, I had to install the FGLRX legacy driver and that the FGLRX legacy driver would be available in Wheezy backports however it is not yet in Wheezy backports so you are gonna have to wait a little while if you have to have those proprietary drivers the open source ones seem to be working just fine for me, to be honest, though, because I played Half-Life in full screen, uh, and I had pretty decent frame rate, and that's about the extent of my PC gaming anyway. Uh, also, starting with Debian 7, the Backports repository uh, is going to be, according to the page, it is integrated with the main archive. Now, I'm not exactly sure what they mean by that, because I did have to add it manually as a separate source uh, but when you actually install software from it you don't have to add the whole you know dash t uh, enable uh, to basically tell it to use the backports repository uh, so uh, yeah uh, I guess I'm gonna cut the video here because I'm basically just kinda shooting from the hip and, and just thinking of things as I go along I might, might make a follow-up video 
to to highlight some key things I learned as I go along. But for right now, I'm extremely happy with Debian 7. Uh, you guys can give it a shot if you want to. Uh, but uh, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or maybe an answer to a question I may have, have brought up in this video, uh, feel free to post a comment below, and I'll respond if it's uh, if 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 necessary. So uh, yeah, this is Garrowin. Y'all have a good out.